Let us learn from the Hachamim who went before us, who under difficult circumstances reached such dizzying heights. I want to give you just one example, tell you a story about Hacham Salman Musafi, alawa shalom. When he was nine years old, the great sage, the crown of our heads, Hacham Yusuf Hayim, alawa shalom, the Ben Ishai, passed away. As many people know, he passed away in a place called Chifl, and he was brought back to Baghdad, and he arrived at night, and was great sorrow and sadness when he arrived, and they buried him at night. Indeed, many years ago, I gave a lecture on the life of the Ben Ishai, and there was an elderly gentleman sitting there, and how well I remember it till today. He was a small schoolboy at the time when Hacham Yosef Haim Alawa Shalom passed away, and he he told us all. He said, there were so many people, you couldn't believe how many people were there. There were people of all persuasions, Jews, non-Jews alike. And the, the schoolboys went with a great banner in front of them, and uh, there were torches, and the banner read, Your righteous one shall go before you. And there was a lot of sadness and crying. Hacham Salman Musafi alawa shalom was nine years old when this took place. And because everyone was going, his parents, his father was a, also a Hacham, Hacham Siyon Meir Musafi, and his wife left their home to go to the funeral. Hacham Salman Musafi wasn't Hacham at the time, was a young boy, was supposed to stay at home. But as soon as his parents left, he secretly decided to sneak out and join the masses at the funeral. When he saw the coffin of Hacham Yosef Haim Alawa Shalom, the Ben Ishai, I say coffin, but in fact, we know that the Jewish way is not to use a coffin. In countries such as the United States, we have to use a coffin because that is the law of the land. But um, in other countries such as Israel today, we don't use coffins. So I'm using the term coffin. When he saw the coffin, it must have affected him deeply when he saw this great sage who was being buried. And he took upon himself to study Torah even more diligently than he was doing. This is a nine-year-old boy. From that day, he separated himself from all the unnecessary matters of this world and dedicated himself to the study of the Torah. And his parents, very religious individuals, were a little concerned uh, by the extent to which he was engrossing himself in his, in his learning and, and the Torah. In fact, they, they spoke to him to perhaps soften his commitment a little bit, but he refused and held on diligently to his ways. Now, he decided that he wanted to rise every, every day or every night at midnight, like his father would do every day, and study Torah till morning. But of course, his parents wouldn't allow such a thing. So he said he had to find a way to wake up. No alarm clocks or whatever it was, or perhaps that would have disturbed people even if there were in the house. He had to find a devious way, an ingenious way rather, to wake up at midnight. So what did he do, ingenious young boy indeed? He tied a rope to one of his hands, and he tied the other end of that rope to the handle on the front door. Now, every time at midnight that his father would open the door to go out to study Torah, it would lift, the rope would get pulled, and it would lift his hand and he would wake up. And then he would go and study Torah. Now this worked fine for two weeks. Eventually, of course, his father had to see the rope and figure out what was going on. Maybe he had to follow the rope and find it attached to his son's hand. So he put an end to that. Now this ingenious young lad decided he had to find another way to get up in the middle of the night and study Torah. So what he did was, he tied the rope again to his hand and threw it out of his window down along the side of the house. And he asked one of his friends, another one of his friends, whose parents allowed him to go and study Torah at midnight, to come to his house at that time and pull the rope. That would lift his hand and he would get up. So in fact, this is what they did. The two of them would go every night to the Beit Midrash and they would study secretly till dawn. There are other stories about him. His mother relates that at the age of 10, he would stand outside the house every Friday night 
and read the entire Sefer Tehillim, the, the entire book of Tehillim, and uh, he would read it by the light of the moon. Now he would lean on a wall that was in very bad condition, and his mother begged him to come inside and read inside. But he didn't want to disturb his younger brother who was sleeping, so he would stand out every Friday night outside in the light of the moon and read the Tehillim. Of course, I want to just add that the reason it would be on Friday nights is according to the Sod, according to the Kabbalah, we are not permitted to study Tehillim and Torah Shebekhtab, uh, the written law, on, uh, at night, except for Shabbat and Yom Tov. Therefore, on Friday night he could do it, and that's why he did it on Friday nights. We must draw inspiration for Sadiqim from the righteous individuals such as these. In our day and age, as I just mentioned, where the Torah is ubiquitous, all we need to do is reach out to take and have it for ourselves because the Torah is blessing. It's like the rain. It brings blessings to the entire world. It is like the dew. It is like the rain. All that is missing sometimes is our desire to study the Torah. And if we will look at these hachamim and what they did in order to be able to study Torah under such difficult circumstances, we will hopefully awaken ourselves and realize that it is there for us, the blessing is there for us for free. All we have to do is have the desire to study the Torah and we will get the blessings just as the rain brings blessing to the entire world, so too the Torah brings blessing to the entire world. But all we have to do is take it and study it.